this demonstration, I will focus on the soft tool knives and applicators. In addition, I'll be sneaking in a masking film tip and trick to help with the background when applying pan pastels. G'day ladies and gents, welcome to x Art. I'm Chrissy, and thanks for joining me. And in this study, I'll be following up from the last video demonstration where I showed the different sponges and sponge applicator tools. I have transferred my image on the surface and I've placed the masking film on the paper. Here I show two types of blades. One is an exacto metal blade and the other has a ceramic blade. The tip is to have a very sharp blade. The sharper the better. In fact, I change my blade every couple of projects. The reason why I want my blade to be sharp is I want to apply a feather light pressure ensuring that I don't cut the surface below the film. The surface you see here is pastel mat 18 by 23 centimeters anthracite and masking film of which I'll go into detail down the track. I will be painting a small bluebell flower. I carefully cut the film around my drawing. This masking film is by Expressit. It's low tack and works really well on pastel mat. Not so much on say grittier surfaces such as UART. If you're using UART, you may have to get uh, a film that has more adhesion. The reason I use masking film is to allow me to apply pan pastels around my subject without causing a halo. In most cases, I start from the background and working my way towards the foreground. I slice in small sections using the pointy end of the blade, which allows more control in guiding the blade around the lines of my drawing. I'm using the number two flat soft tool and sponge to achieve a blurry or out of focus background. I hold the soft tool quite firmly and I pick up the pigment from the pan and apply light layers, taking care not to cover the tooth of the paper. Although I, I must say uh, pastel mat allows many layers and I can't remember the last time I applied so many that I couldn't apply anymore. I'm going from dark to light. I start off with my darker shade first, raw umber extra dark. If I wanted to go darker still I would mix black and raw umber extra dark but that's another video. In between colours, I use a paper towel to wipe off excess pastel so as not to contaminate the area I've painted and the pan itself. I apply the pigment with the knife tool, swaying backwards and forwards in small sections until I've covered all the areas I want to use this colour. The next colour I'm using is Chromium Oxide Extra Dark Green. I apply the same process and then proceed to use Chromium Oxide Green followed by Bright Yellow Green Shade and the lightest is Chromium Oxide Green Tint. All the way my process now is gently blending using the soft tool and building my layers. I'm also thinking at this stage not to make the background too muddy or to overwork the areas. These tools work so well with blending, it's easy to get carried away and to overblend. So try to keep this in mind when using these tools and sponges. Thank you. 
As you can see, the masking film is, has worked a treat. Uh, I can apply the pans freely without affecting the subject. Another cool tip here is I'm tilting the soft tool on the side to make a straight line. And now I carefully peel off the masking film and as you can see lovely crisp edges and I can now proceed to work on the flower. I start off with the stem which is the darkest area with the applicator tool. This tool has a removable head and can be replaced at any time. Now the petals. Again, I start off using my darks, applying these base layers. The colors I'm using here are Thalo Blue Extra Dark, then Thalo Blue, and my lights will be Raw Umber Extra Tint. Now here uh, you see I'm using a separate piece of paper to mix my colors. I haven't got the shade, so I decide to make the color I'm looking for. You can mix in a few ways. Uh, you can mix on, a, on your surface as you paint. Uh, some artists mix colours on a large sponge, but I prefer to mix on a separate piece of paper. The smallest tool available is the small sponge applicator. This tool is great for details and getting into small areas. I've also got a kneaded eraser. This handy tool lifts the pastels with ease and a tool I can't do without. Mixing pan pastels to make new colours are one of the key features of this product and it reminds me of using say a watercolour or oil painting palette. In other words, feels like you're painting wet only dry. I'm thinking now that I've painted in the base colors for the flower and I can see that I may need to adjust my background, uh, put in more darks in areas and perhaps a few lights. I will work this painting and will try to get as many layers as I can. Again, being careful not to overwork and overblend as I would like to use pastel pencils for my very last details. I want to make this flower pop, so I start to work in with my pastel pencils. Pastel pencils work beautifully over the pan pastel and I use all kinds of brands. Uh, some pastel pencils are harder than others. The pastel pencils I use are Faber-Castell Pitt, Stabilo Carbothello, Brunzale, Gioconda, Derwent and Conti. Even though these pastel pencils are pastels, they each have their own characteristics and work differently. Personally, I like them all for different reasons. I use the small applicator sponge to blend my pastel pencil areas as well. So I will keep using the pastel pencils to create texture on the petals and continue until I feel I'm done. If you have any questions about the pans and the techniques I use, feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below. I will put a link to some videos that might be useful when it comes to mixing and various blending techniques. So until then, 
uh, keep on keeping on and happy painting.